all right welcome back to the channel you know thank you you know even though i do a lot of i react to a lot of rap videos and, and stuff like that i also do love um introspective stuff like this that make you think about life like that's one of the things that's really important to me like i i, I hate people who not say that I hate people, but I, you know, sometimes I don't like all the superficial shit or people who don't, don't think about life. Like don't, don't like really deeply think about life and the world and what's going on. Um, I've been blessed, um, to, to be a really deep thinker about life, space, all of that. Like I think about everything all the time. So, and I think it's just because like, what i grew up around like the people people who i've talked to like i love hearing what people have to say about certain topics and um i love people who think deeply about like what's going on and um in the world like our culture think deeply about like what's going on in the space like people who like theories like i love i just love that stuff so today we have a video as you can see right there it's an interesting one um it's about um so it's this um australian guy he's talking about um have hookups replaced dating and so i'm gonna get into my age i'm gonna tell you um, i'm 23 and um i was in a relationship when i was in college um obviously i'm 23 so i'm not in college anymore it's been like a year about um a year and a half about and um I really do think um it's kind of I wouldn't say it's 50-50, I'd say it's like 75-25. Like 25% of people are actually like you know, 25% of me thinks that like you know dating is still here and uh, you know there's people out here that that do date and it works out, but a lot of it is um hookup culture. Like people just hook up. So 75% of me thinks it's that's what it's um become. Like people don't really date anymore; they just hook up. That's what it is. But let me get into this video so we can hear what he has to say, and then I'll chime in at certain points if I feel like I have anything um that's important, or you know. Yeah. If I have anything to say, I'll pause it and let you know. Let's get into it. And of course, I clicked the wrong button. That happens almost every single time. I should know by now. You know, there was a time where I used to think that my five long-term relationships were failures. But given today's environment, where no one has relationships, it seems I've had five successful relationships. I've had five things that no one's even had one of. A subscriber of mine done. See, that depends on what he um, means. I don't know if this guy is married right now, but um, I don't know if you would necessarily say the relationship was successful if he's not with someone right now. It's hard to say. Um, you, you, like, you could say it's somewhat, somewhat successful, as in like it was a good relationship and you learned a lot from it. But if you're not married, then was it really 100% successful? Because my understanding is that if 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 I could say that my relationship is successful, successful, like let's say I, I had a good relationship, but it we just grew apart, then I wouldn't say it was successful. Because to me, successful would be finding the one that completes you. And you never have to search again, like you get married and you know she's you know you're not messing up she's not messing up you guys click like 100 percent. like you just it's almost like let's not say read each other's mind but like you know you just you both understand each other on a deeper level than most people can ever ever reach and no one else reaches you on that level and it just it is one of those relationships that lasts forever until death do we part like for real, for real. So that's what I think. All right, let's continue. Dunstan recently left a comment under one of my recent videos where he said, only boomers and Christians date. And I have to wonder, does he have a point? 
with the younger generation. It's the norm, the absolute norm. So only boomers and Christians date. So the hookup culture is um, where she finds the guy with the with a good dick. And um, that's who she decides to be her boyfriend. Or he finds the girl with the with the good, good punani. And that's who he decides to stay with. So there's nothing deeper like that. That fact that um, there's probably some relationships like that is ridiculous to me. But let's continue. That either you're hooking up or you're single. That's it. There's no in between. There's no monogamy. There's very little long term relationships or what your parents and before that would consider a committed relationship. A women's lib has conditioned the ladies to think of commitment or marriage or whatever as a prison, as oppression. And men are just taking what women offer, which is transient hookups, while Facts. women keep their options open. Again, we're either hooking up or we're on our own. Given the 80-20 rule where 20% of the men get virtually most of the women, and those 20% of the men never settle down with anyone, they just perpetually live a chad lifestyle until they get old, it leaves everyone else single and left over. You know, one thing yeah. you can say about history was... Yeah, that's facts. And um, unfortunately, those chads don't want to settle down and those girls like them for their bodies or or their money or whatever. So they end up going with them and then um, then they just get um, hounded out by like a good 50 of them. Um, and they're like, oh, even though, you know, I didn't stay with him, you know, he was good and, um, good in bed and, and he looked good. So it's a win for me, but not really because, you know, he's just hitting it for one night and then leaving you, you're not getting a relationship. So at the end of the day, when you turn like, what, 40, you got nothing left. And then you're trying to get with a guy that's your age and he knows that probably done been pounded out by like 50 dudes he probably don't even want to really be with you he's just gonna pound you and toss you to the side like those other dudes there of course there's always exceptions but that's probably how it'll turn out i you know i don't know that's just my opinion but that's the state of how society might end up being or how it already is to be honest with you um so yeah that's just how it is. Is that those twenty percent of men got the first pick, and then it would leave the rest of all of us to sort of pair bond and create our own families, and the human race would develop and so forth. It would leave time for other pursuits like furthering society, inventing things, technology, so forth. But all that's happening now is those those chads, those twenty percent of guys at the top. Are just perpetually enjoying that cycle of hooking up while women keep their op options open thinking they're going to land the chad which they won't they'll land the chad for one night one night what does it say for i think i might throw in something funny right here you know probably probably right right in here but yeah i might throw in one night by Lil yachty just to just spice it up um but yeah, that's that's what it is. They just want you for the night, and then that's over. You you gotta really um. It's funny because on on a lot of these dating apps, they're like, oh, um, no hookups, blah blah blah. But if they see like someone that looks really good and they can't resist, then they're probably gonna hook up with them. And it's like, you really do have to go deeper. Like you you really should get to know the person on a on a deeper level, and then. You can figure it out for yourself if you really want to just give it up for that one night then uh, you know that's your decision but if you're actually looking for something serious then you really should get to know them of course they could just play you regardless like they look good and you really want them you're probably just gonna fall for their trap regardless but that's what i think commitment what does it say more importantly for trust if you don't give enough time to stay with anyone you don't trust anyone. You don't form or recreate the bonds that our forefathers did. Not just in terms of the superficial family. You may not want family, but 
when everything ends before it's even taken hold, before roots have even developed, things like trust and community are gone. We're atomized individuals. That's really something important to think about. When you're young, you think it's fine because you don't know yourself, you don't know what you want. But by the time you find out what you want, you find out the time you've wasted. You find out that you're too old to get what you should have gotten. There is a lot of women my age wanting to settle down finally and have a serious relationship. And men my age aren't interested anymore. I mean, even if you were the marrying kind when you were younger sense. as a guy, why would a man my age want to settle down or even delusionally want to have children with some of these women that think they still can? Why, when I've got my life together as a stable single male at this point, why would I change it? And to be fair, there are a lot of women my age that have their kids from previous relationships and they don't really want to start again. So how can we come together? The, the answer is we can't. And especially you add on to that, that they've got children. They don't want to endanger whatever stability they have there. We tend to have transient relationships at a distance and keep the lives that we've created for ourselves thus far. And that's quite sensible. Guys I talk to online and off, it is the norm that they have not had a serious relationships at all. All it is. Yeah, I think personally, I think that's a problem. I think you should um you should have at least one so that you know. Just so you know, like it's a it's a learning experience. Um, I think it's important. But you should at least have a serious, like at least one serious relationship, even if it doesn't work out. But um, yeah, it is it is bad, bad out here. Is is hookups? Um, I I think dating's on its way out. I'm not saying it should be on its way out, but this is the trend. This is what's happening. We are isolated. We are so individuated without even knowing what we want. I was speaking to a young family friend the other day in her late twenties. She has never had a relationship. Admittedly, she has never had a relationship. She's had a lot of hookups. She's been with a lot of guys, but she's never known a relationship. And I used to think a little while ago that was very surprising and odd when people said, yeah, I've been in a relationship and it was for three months. And I'm thinking, you haven't even been past the honeymoon period. That usually takes six months to a year in some cases. And yeah, I can see the attraction for a young person That's in bad. today's nervous environment to be very weary about putting your eggs all in one basket. We're told to diversify our funds. You don't keep a car for very long. You make sure you've got multiple bank accounts. If one gets closed, uh, you have multiple streams of income. You see people online. If one gets shut down, if your channel gets shut down, People are diversifying and fragmenting themselves where they don't actually invest wholeheartedly in any, in any one direction, in any one person. And as such, they're fragmented. I just want to say, um, you know, obviously that's not everyone, but that, that is um, a lot of people diversify. You know, if you put your eggs into one basket, then you worry about and you care too much about it just like stocks if you had all your money in one stock you'd be checking that stock every second seeing if it goes up or goes down but if you have your money spread out between a bunch of individual stocks then you're probably not going to be checking every single minute of every second you'll probably check every you know 30 every maybe an hour hour goes by in the day you decide oh let me check see what what's going on but it's a lot less risky, obviously, and that's the same thing we do with people. Um, you might have a boyfriend, but you're still talking to like three other guys on the side that you say are your friends, or the guy might have a girlfriend, but he still they have like a friend group, and he might be smashing your friend in the friend group, and you don't even know. So is is interesting how we um we like sprinkle a little bit everywhere to try and get like. A taste of everything just so we're not too attached to one thing i see people diversifying themselves in a hundred different directions whether it's with people or whether it's with hobbies and things where they never know how much richness they can get out of an aspect of their lives because they never 
throw themselves at it. Admittedly, the environment does everything in its power to make you diversify so shallowly that you never even barely dip your toe in any one direction. You don't, you don't put all your chips in one basket because the smart thing to do is diversify your interests for survival's sake. You know, if they shut my channel down, I've still got a stream of income. If my girlfriend leaves me, I've got another girlfriend. It's the idea of spinning plates with people what did and, I just say? and hobbies where you're not experiencing any one of them. You're trying to survive by having things in your life that really mean nothing. And you know they mean nothing to you because you've got continual backups of any one thing, people or hobbies or interests flicking on your phone. You've always got something to sprint forward towards, but you're never sitting still with anything. You're never developing a relationship with anything. You're never investing in anything. You keep diversifying yourself in 100 different directions, which means you never really experience any one thing. Of course, it's admirable when you see a novelist who's spent their entire life writing and they've written a couple of really great books. You can see the richness in, in a life like that. You think, wow, if only I could get some of that, whatever that is. Or you see your grandparents who've been together for their whole lives. You think, wow, if I could just get some of that. But if you never even take a step in a direction. That's the fairy tale that everyone wants, low key. Like they, if you had grandparents that have been together forever, or you watch like Disney or like, you know, certain shows, you, 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 like, I feel like guys more than, I don't, I can't speak for girls, but like guys more than girls, I'm a lot of the, like the nice guys, or if you started off as like a somewhat nice guy, um, probably romanticized or, you know, nice guy as in like before you even got into any type of relationship, before you had any experiences, probably thought about that one girl that like, oh, like if she was my girl, like it'll be forever. Like, you know we're going to be together forever. Like, this is going to be like it. Like every guy thinks about like, just getting like one, it'll be like it. Not every guy. Cause I can't, can't say, can't speak for every guy, but like, probably a, a good amount of guys. And, um, it never works out. Like I say it never, I, I keep saying these definite words, nothing's definite, but like a lot of times it doesn't work out. Like either you end up messing up <laughs> or she ends up messing up. So you might be the type of guy that thinks she's forever and then another girl starts hitting on you and because like she's hitting on you so hard you end up folding and you end up sleeping with her friend or you sleeping with someone in the class or like someone that she knows because they was like coming on to you hard and you and she they look good too just as good if not better than your girl and so you end up folding under the pressure because you she's probably the only one you've been with so you want to taste something else see if it tastes just as good or if not better and um you ruin your own your own relationship or you're with your girl and she you know people grow out of each other so maybe she eventually she starts like thinking that she can do better than you or that like like she wants to experience more she could literally have the same feelings like oh um, this guy is hitting on me, his best friend or to someone that he knows that looks better, if not just as good as he does. He has finances. He's offering all these things. They snap and they text and they doing all this. She starts getting feelings for him. And then, oh, lo and behold, the, uh, your best friend or like someone, you know, smashing your girl. And then she's not the one. And now you're hurt. So it can go both ways. So. That's what happens sometimes. Let me put this back just a little bit. Wow, keep going. Just get some of that. But if you never even take a step in a direction, then you'll never get any of it. Facts. <laughs> These days, people just have hookup after hookup after hookup after hookup. I'll never be hurt because I'll never feel anything. All I'll feel is lust. Maybe that's it. A generation of people just comfortable with lust because lust is safe investment or love or caring, sharing. It's easier to just hoard just your time and nothing else and not let anyone take that from you. But all you can do with time is give it away. 
I mean, you can give it away just here to yourself, or you can give it away with people. I mean, even the... Yep, can give it away. And you see me, my, myself, I, you know, I, I've invested time into people and certain things. And even if you're on Tinder or dating apps, you're investing time that you're not getting back. So, you know, each person that you match with, you, you talk for a little bit and then you end up just ghosting each other or nothing happens. You don't meet or it doesn't work. It's a waste of your time, bro. That's why I, I, I go on, um, if I do go on, I swipe a little bit, but I don't waste that much time on it. Same with social media. I don't waste a lot of time with it. The only thing that I invest my time into these days is work because it gives me money, possibly help me get my own place and get out of, you know, the struggle, <laughs> struggle. Or I invest my time in working out because bettering yourself, bettering your body is like, there's nothing better than that. You feel good, like makes you feel better. And yeah, it's just, it's a plus all around, like making yourself better, working on yourself. So I've, I, I, I never used to work out like that. I played a little bit of sports here and there, but like I was never like super brolic with a six pack and abs. My legs were always skinny. So I work out now just for myself. And like at the end of the day, I feel like you becoming the best per version of yourself, like maxing your body out, your intelligence, your mind, like it's not, it's never going to be a waste of time. Because not it, it'll help you in every aspect of your life, getting girls, it'll help you with jobs, it'll help you with everything, literally, literally everything. There's no downside to working on yourself, working out, getting better, getting brolic, like do it, you might as well. And then the only other thing I invest my time into is this YouTube thing because it's, uh, it's like my only hobby. Actually, no, it's not my only hobby, but it's one of the ones that I'm very, um, I really wanted to do it. Let's just say that. And I didn't think I could do it cause I'm kind of introverted, but like started it and now I can't stop. I just like making videos, even though I only have time to do it on the weekends. Like I make videos for my gaming channel. I make videos for this channel and I, I have a third channel for finances. I'm not going to plug them cause I want them to grow by themselves first. And then like once they once they like start taking off, then I'll plug them in all of my other channels. But for now, I'm just going to leave them, see how much they can grow. And um, that's it. But yeah, you, it's, a, it's definitely important to not waste your time, like, especially with dating. Cause you might, you know, there's, there's girls who just go out to eat with you just to like get a free meal. I've had a friend who did that and I, I thought it was fucked up, but I, you know, what, what can I, what can I say to her? She already did it and she probably going to do it again in the future. Like she looked good. So she could get guys to do that. But like, if you're spending money on a girl thinking that, oh, you might, this could go somewhere, but she's really just using you for food. That's, that's messed up. And you're not getting that money back. You're not getting that time back. You could have spent that money and that time on someone else who actually appreciated you. So it sucks. But that's life. Friendship that people have these days, especially in times of isolation online, even friendships are diluted, but they're about the only thing that people invest in, in terms of relating to each other. It's getting less and less. I hazard to think in the next couple of years. I mean, now it's generally acquaintances. We have sex with acquaintances. We have friendships with acquaintances. See, I'm very careful with who I call friends nowadays because it's getting harder and harder to call anyone a real friend, um, especially since, you know, a lot of people want you to text them constantly. I like, I'm not a texter. Like, it's either you hit me up or we probably don't talk. Like, I don't know how to explain it, but like, unless we're talking about something important or something like, like, yeah, it's just like, like, why am I wasting my time? Like, communication is a two-way street, too. So if they wanted to talk to you, they'd probably hit you up. So if they're not hitting, hitting you up and you're the one always starting communication, they probably won't fuck with you that much or like that or that heavily if they're not 
even attempting to start conversation with you. So I'm very, you know, if, if you, if we don't talk like that and I used to call you a friend or like we used to hang out, we used to see each other a lot. And then we don't see each other that much now. And you're not texting me or hitting me up and I'm not texting you or hit you, hitting you up. Then you're probably not a friend in my eyes. You're more like an acquaintance. I call a lot of people acquaintance because giving them that friendship title, um, a lot of people abuse it or it, they're not even really your friend. You're giving them that title for no reason. They're just an acquaintance, someone who you talk to or have talked to, and it doesn't go any deeper than that. Uh, there's a lack of depth, and it's no surprise to me that when I talk to guys, their, their vocabulary, how they think, they're not around people very often. They don't talk. They don't use language that often. They throw short phrases and words to each other because that's what they're used to on their phones, in their feeds, on Twitter. And without that long-form intimacy with your hobbies or people, you don't trust those things because trust takes time. Trust with your hobby, trust with, with people. Again, atomized and on your own your whole life. And it just reinforces the idea of, see, there's no one I can count on but me. But coronavirus it's is hard. reinforcing too. Definitely we're, harder. We're, we're surrounded less and less by family and friends. And, we're, and when we're conditioned with that environment, that is what we start to recreate because that's all we're used to. Again, as there's no surprise why relationally we are far, far different than our parents and grandparents and those before them. Only having sex with strangers, which isn't real intimacy, it's just lust. No trust because that takes time and you're not giving anyone or anything any time to develop any kind of trust with you. And then you feel alone because you've got no one to trust. Quasimandai said it well, relationships are for those who can relate. And I see very few people who can relate. They can barely talk to each other. I agree. They can barely speak. If you're not relating meaningfully, you're not forming long-term bonds, you're not forming trust, you're going to feel more and more alone. And like it or not, people don't like this saying, but yeah, we are a social species and we are not used to this. I mean, we can adapt and we are and we should, but uh, we are not built for this. I mean, no. That's very true. Um, me personally, I'm a little different because my you know, just being an introvert, like I find peace in being alone, like like having like no one else here, even if it's just quietness or like I'm listening to music. If I'm by myself, I can be fine for quite some time, probably more than most people um, in terms of being by myself. Like I really don't mind. But for the extroverts and, you know, people who are suffering in the pandemic, I know it's a lot more of people who can't be alone than who can. Um, I'm just an anomaly, you know. There's, there's other people like that. I've seen YouTubers who prefer, like, being alone. And I think it is um, a YouTuber thing because it, with certain YouTubers, because it's easier to speak into a mic than actually talk into a person, so... That's why I realized how much I kind of enjoyed this because it's not really that difficult to speak into the mic. Everything else, like editing, press hitting the record button, all of that is harder. But once you actually turn it on, turn on the mic and start talking, it becomes a lot easier as just you in the room, just speaking into a mic, telling your thoughts off the top of your brain, introverts, they're it's a lot easier for them to do that. Community, no family, no friends. This is pretty new, especially in such a densely packed world like we are today. It really fucks with your head because you're surrounded by people and you're completely alone. Yeah. And as we all know, as Robin Williams said, the worst is to feel completely alone, surrounded by people. And that is what we all tend to be now. Yep. And look, I'm only the describing the environment. Work. I'm not saying to give up. I'm saying don't pretend to throw yourself at a world that you think is still 
your parents' world or your grandparents' world. We need to adapt. I don't know what solutions I can give. Um, and I'm not really a person that likes to give advice. Uh, the person has to find their own way. But I said it before is be interested enough in yourself. Uh, look, I generally think we can only get out of this and better our lives philosophically. That's about the only way out I can see. Because everything else we used to trust, social structures, relationships with, between men and women, um, certain automatic things like that used to be on your side and used to be productive. Now they're not. Now they want to chew you up and spit you out and laugh at you for being so gullible. So it's up to the individual now to be philosophically interested in their own psychology and how they relate to the world and be really, really responsible for creating your own ethics and values and living by them. Because right now, as Nietzsche said, if you're not obeying yourself, you're being commanded. And it's never more evident than today. Yeah. I mean, I people agree. are living literally as emotional nomads. Imagine living out of your backpack relationship-wise, never having any place to sleep for longer than a week and moving and moving and never feeling at home, never feeling like you have a home with people. That's what we're doing with each other and our lives. Existentially, we're nomads. And this is another very important thing to remember. If you're never spending enough time with a person relationally or, you know, intimately, romantically, or even platonically with friends. All you get used to doing is keeping that initial mask on of pretending to be what the other person wants so you can just long enough to have sex or just long enough to be polite or just long enough to get the job, and then you're out of there. If we get used to wearing that mask and that's all we are with other people. Keep doing we it. never spend long enough to be intimate, to be honest, to really reveal yourself. who we are. Not for them, for us. We never spend long enough to be rooted in relationship. Yeah, so if you do what he's saying and be an actor and continuously make wear the makeup, you're never going to be yourself and you're going to hurt yourself in the long run. Because one day you're going to wake up and realize that um, all these people wearing the mask around, you can never actually be your true self around. It's just going to hurt you. Chips with others to give it enough time to get there. We are living perpetually with these masks that we feel awful about because we know we're being fake. I've mentioned this in the last couple of videos, but it really comes to the forefront. When long-term relationships are dead and they continue to die, they're almost extinct. We are relating to each other with the initial polite masks so we don't feel alone, and then it ends, and then we put on that mask again. And the only time the mask comes off is when we go to bed at night on our own, feeling anxious. Yeah, that's bad. And then a lot of times... It's All right, so next part, he's going to talk about his own philosophy, and then that's the end. I'm going to cut it off right here because video is getting a little bit too long it's going to be hard for me to um render all of it it's probably going to take like a whole hour maybe an hour and 30 minutes just to render um unfortunately i like getting my videos up faster than that so it's already been 33 minutes which is 33 is my favorite number so i'm gonna stop it here um like comment subscribe tell me what you think i think um everything this guy is saying is complete facts if you want to know the name of his channel it's called hu man m-a-n q man but um man is capitalized and q is lowercase um so you know please go um watch this video if you find this information um interesting or useful um i know i dragged this out 30 minutes who's gonna watch a whole 30 minute video but if you did please like comment subscribe i appreciate the views and i really think what he's saying is valuable information um, I chimed in on the parts that I thought I could provide a little bit um, of my own thoughts and information. And um, that's pretty much it. I appreciate you guys for taking, you know, time out of your day.